So let's look at the beginning of the FIDO. <coughs> uh, the material I want to cover is from the beginning of the dialogue, which begins on page 45, until about the top of page 59. Uh, and uh, this will cover the introduction to the discussion and the basics of that. I want to talk a little bit about the background of the setting what is actually going on that day, because after all, this is a dialogue about a real person, Socrates, uh, and something that really happened to him. You know, how accurate the uh, record of the conversation is, no one will ever know. This was written by Plato, who was a real person, uh, who wrote exclusively, almost exclusively, in, in terms of the texts that actually come down to us, in dialogue form. And he chose to... Uh, speak through the person of his friend, another real person, a real historical person named Socrates, who was an older man, who was a philosopher, and uh, really existed, and things happened to him. Uh, and uh, he really died this way, as far as we know. That is, uh, he drank poison on a certain day, having been imprisoned for uh, the conviction, uh, his conviction on a certain crime. And this really happened. So what we see in the beginning of the dialogue is a kind of a setup between uh, two characters, Echecrates, and pronunciation is not important here, and Fido, who gives his name to this dialogue. You can say Fado or Fido. I just say Fido because it's my best guess of how it should actually be pronounced, the closest thing to the Greek, but it, again, it doesn't matter. Fado, I'll say Fido. Uh, so... It is basically Echecrates, who is a stranger, is not an Athenian, uh, and all of this happens in Athens, and Plato is an Athenian, and Socrates was an Athenian. Athens, the largest, the most important, the most culturally vibrant, the most commercially successful, most cosmopolitan city in ancient Greece. Uh, great uh, playwrights, uh, poets like Sophocles and um, Aeschylus, uh, great historians like Thucydides were Athenians, and these two men, uh, Plato and Socrates, were Athenians. And uh, Socrates is, is, I don't know who that is, but Fido was a real person, uh, apparently, that was who was a friend and you could say student of Socrates. Uh, Socrates is now dead, and Socrates wants to know what it was like the day of his death, knowing that Fido was there. Uh, Fido is going to tell him. And uh, basically what Fido is doing is telling Echecrates what was said that day. So if you're having trouble uh, reading the dialogue, remember that it's it's basically one person telling another person what happened. So there's a lot of he said, he said, uh, Socrates said, Seeds said, Simeus said, uh, etc., uh, but a little reading, you'll get into you'll get into the rhythm of that. That is, you'll you'll get a hang get the hang of being able to tell who's saying what and when. Uh, certainly, Socrates is dominates the discussion. He always does. So, if uh, with, with some exceptions, because some of the characters actually offer philosophical theories, for instance, about uh, the nature of the soul and things like that. But most of the discussion will be carried by Socrates. But be careful, just to note who's saying what. So Fido begins to tell Echecrates the story of the conversation and the general story of what happened that day. What did happen that day? Well, Socrates, the background is, Socrates has been sitting in prison awaiting the execution, the carrying out of his death sentence. He has been convicted of a capital crime, a crime that is considered so serious that he is going to be put to death. And there are two other dialogues you might want to look at. First, uh, the Apology, and secondly, the Credo. Uh, the first of which is Socrates' defense speech, or purports to be the speech that Socrates gave before the jury of 500 men who were judging him. And the second is a dialogue as he's uh, sitting in prison, which takes place, I think, the day or two before the action of the Fido. Uh, he has been convicted uh, of different crimes, uh, the crime of impiety, because it was actually a crime not to believe in the gods in those days. Uh, it was against the law. 
And perhaps more importantly for us, he was uh, convicted of corrupting the youth of Athens by making the better argument appear the worse. Charges like that. That is, that he was he was making the youth worse. He was corrupting them. Uh, he was uh, somehow or another leading them astray. Now these charges, both of them, Socrates strenuously denied in his defense speech. Um, he certainly didn't consider himself an atheist. He believed in the gods. He might not have believed in exactly the way that his fellows believed in the gods, but he certainly believed in the gods, as he suggests in a lot of things that he says in the Phaedo. Um, he does believe in, in the afterlife. He believes in the gods of some sort. And he certainly didn't think that he was corrupting the youth of Athens. He actually thought he was making them better. 